I'm going to be uh, replicating a design I saw online a little while ago of one of the professional ones, I guess. I'm not sure, exactly sure what brand it's made by, but uh, I guess here's a picture of it. Uh, and it looks just super simple and relatively easy to make. And you don't, it doesn't even look like you need any machine tools to make it. You just need a clamp or some sort of vise that you can bend a chunk of aluminum in. And that's what I picked up yesterday. Uh, it's just this three foot long chunk of, I guess, one inch wide aluminum. And then for the weights, I just went to the hardware store and picked up uh, half a kilo of the cheapest washers I could find. And I'm also using just, these are just really standard bolts. These are quarter inch, uh, 20 threads per inch. And this is actually what the little tripod mounts on the underside of the cameras use. And to go along with those, I got a bunch of wing nuts. There's a bunch of wing nuts there, a few bolts. And then for the actual pivoting system on the bottom, because that's what really matters, I've decided to try out one of these universal joints from an RC car of mine. And with this, in combination with a few bearings on the end, I will get a basically a joint that'll pivot around in all the different directions and spin at the same time. So this should work just perfectly. So here's the general design. I figure I'll have a four inch chunk down here that the handle will sit on. One inch chunk separating the handle bar from the camera bar because the camera will ride on the top. Off here I'm just going to throw a eight, in eight inch radius circle of aluminum until it ends. As I was bending it in the vise and trying to give it a very sharp corner, I heard this crunching noise that just didn't really sound very good, so I've decided to uh, clamp it under, the, under this piece of wood and just bend it over top, and it should give it a sort of a slightly rounder edge. Give this a shot. No! Don't break! For the big 8 inch radius chunk, I'm just going to bend it around the outside of this pot, and uh, that should give me a nice curve. I just marked out a bunch of holes with a permanent marker. They're spaced about an inch apart, and then I have a couple really close together there, and I'll show you what my plans for those are uh, a little bit later. And I've got some more up here, so I can put a weight out front if I need to. And a bunch back here for the handle mounting position, and similarly for the actual camera itself. And again, I have another couple holes there, and I'll show you what I'm using those for in a little while. But uh, I'm just going to take this nail and make some marks and drill these holes out. I said I would explain what these two little holes down there and these two corresponding ones up top are for. And uh, I was sort of thinking about this uh, quite a bit and I'm thinking that if I have a bunch of weights down here and a weight up here and I'm moving this thing around from the handle, it could start to bounce and flex a little bit. So my sol solution to that is to throw a piece of paracord through the top two holes like this and through the bottom two as well. And then I'll put it in a bit of tension like that, sort of like a bow. And now, it doesn't flex nearly as much. It may look like I've done a lot since you last saw it, but it's actually pretty basic. I'll show you it from the top down. Basically, I just used some of those bolts I showed you earlier. A wing nut and a bolt, uh, in combination with some washers and some rubber O-rings I found in my basement. And a couple strips of electrical tape up top, just to make a camera mount for the camera itself. And then uh, I attached my little universal axis to the underside of this thing and uh, just to have it set up the way I showed you earlier and what I've done is I've wrapped some electrical tape around the joint itself and put some rubber bands around there this just gives me some kind of rotational control and some side to side control it just stiffens everything up a little bit so I can actually move it back and forth like that and uh, I've also put a little piece of paracord across here just to cinch this up so I don't get any motion like that I ran out of nuts and bolts so I just had to tape on some weights out front which seemed to work pretty well, it just doesn't look very good. And then what I had to do here is I totally neglected the fact that the camera is probably going to be sort of, uh, I guess, the, the center of gravity of the camera itself is going to be off center and it's somewhere over here and the actual tripod mount on the camera is right in line with the lens. So it makes sense that it's a little bit off center but I didn't take that into account so I had to make a, I just cut this thing out of wood. I didn't have any aluminum left so that's why this is made out of wood. It doesn't look too bad though. 
and uh, just threw some weights out there. And this cord here is again just to prevent it from vibrating too much because I'm quickly finding that the one flaw with this design here is the material I made it out of. This aluminum stuff really likes to flex back and forth quite a bit. Like, it's pretty good now because I have it all cinched down, but if I was to do this over again, I'd probably use thicker stock or I might use steel or something. I'm just gonna throw my camera on it and I have a course set up in my backyard I'll run you through. So, nice and slowly across the deck. And down the stairs. And over the fence. And orbit around the motorcycle. I'm gonna run to my backyard, jump over the fence. And I'm gonna slowly go through these chairs. And orbit around the table. And then the car test. I'm just gonna switch hands here. Hold on, there we go. Whoops. So, inside. And at the other side. Here's the course. Let's see how those look. So, what I will say about this is. Uh, it definitely did stabilize the footage, you can't argue that fact. And it looked pretty nice, you know. Uh, when I was running and jumping over that fence and stuff, it was a little bit shaky at some points. And I attrib attribute most of that to the, uh, like the rotation of everything. Like up top here, the camera will bounce back and forth a little bit. So if I was to make another one, the things I would do is I'd use a thicker piece of aluminum here. I'd make the camera mounting spot a little bigger and probably try and join this up to the top in some way just to keep it from flexing at all. But uh, I think that's about it. You can make up your own mind as to whether it's worth making one of these or not. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching.